going to start on the mat again today. So similar sort of structure as last week. But we're just going to add a few little bits in. Ooh. The music seems to be playing through here. So I'll just leave that there. So we'll be, yes, so same sort of thing as last week. And we're just going to come onto the mat. The knees are going to be nice and wide. Toes together and then reaching the arms out in front of you as you drop the bottom to the heels, the forehead into the floor. So just closing the eyes here if you haven't done so already. And remember it's okay that if the bottom doesn't touch the heels or the forehead doesn't touch the floor, try and find one or the other that works for you. And we'll just take a few moments here to arrive on our mat to arrive in our practice, in our hour out of the day. To relax, to be kind, to be gentle. Let's take our time. There's no rush. So right now you're exactly where you need to be for the next hour. If you haven't done so already, begin to bring the breath in through the nose and out through the nose. Maybe counting to five as you inhale. And then counting to five as you exhale. And we'll just spend a few moments breathing this way. So breathing all the way to the top of the lungs. And emptying the lungs all the way to the bottom. Trying to breathe into the belly, into the side of the body. Into the chest, into the back. And as you do so, just take a scan through the body. Notice any areas of tension, any areas of tightness maybe. But also those areas of openness. There may be less. But notice if they're still there. The arms out long. We're going to walk our hands over to the left hand side to reach over to the left, creating a stretch down the right side of the body. The sitting bones, the bottom still drawing towards the heels. And the right arm is nice and lifted, so the palm is in the floor, but the elbow is off of the mat. A nice long curved line from the lower back the way to the baby finger. Relax the head, relax the face. Three, maybe four more breaths here. Maybe you want to walk your hands a little further to the left, deepening the stretch. In the intercostal muscles stretching between the rib cage. Maybe there's a bit of space underneath the shoulder blades. Or possibly you feel this more into the lower back. When you're ready, walking the hands over to the side. If you want to spend a little longer there, you can. But when you're ready, reaching the arms over to the right, so creating that arc, leaning into the left side of the body, cracking open from the lower back all the way up to that little finger, relaxing the head. And trying to breathe a little deeper into the left side of the body. So we've created that space by lifting the arm, by lifting the rib cage. Allowing the lungs, the diaphragm to expand just a little larger, a little bigger, a little fuller. So 
gentle relaxing the face, still keeping that breath if you can, the five on the in, five on the out, if that's too much, then find the number that's comfortable for you. Three more breaths. Here in this side stretch, if you want to walk it a little further, you can. Just tiptoeing the fingers. After our third breath, whenever you're ready, walking the hands back to centre. Dropping the forehead, so that might mean lifting the bottom off the heels, that's okay. Bring your hands together into prayer and then lift them above the head into that shark spin. Kind of press the armpits down into the floor. Spending a few moments here, opening through the shoulders, through the triceps. Remember, you have lots of options if you want to take it further. If you've practiced yoga before, you are more than welcome. If anything I'm suggesting doesn't feel right in your body, then feel free just to pass. Doing whatever feels good for you right now in this moment. One more breath. Releasing the hands down to the mat, allowing those eyes to slowly open a soft gaze, coming into our tabletop so the shoulders come over the wrists. Spreading the fingers so the index finger goes forward and then maybe adjusting the knees so they come underneath the hips. Checking you're on the tops of the feet, the toes are pointed. The eyes, the elbows are facing in, so we have the triceps switched on. When you're ready, we're going to lift the bottom, drop the belly, lift the chest, look up towards the ceiling as we inhale, pressing the floor away. And then exhaling, tucking under the tailbone, so squeezing the bottom. Pressing into the shoulders as we draw the belly in, bring the chin into the chest, maybe the throat into our cat spine, so really pressing the floor away. Again, lift the bottom, drop the belly, lift the chest, gaze up towards the ceiling, so really trying to articulate between those vertebrae. Exhale, tuck tailbone, squeeze the bottom, press the floor, chin to chest, feel that stretch between the shoulders. Two more times, so we're just inhaling, speeding it up just a little bit, to go with the breath, flowing through the spine. Exhaling, cat spine, so tucking tailbone, maybe squeezing the bottom and the hips are over the knees, the chin's into the chest. Inhaling, cow, the bottom goes up, belly down, ribs down, chest up, gaze up. One last time for luck, big exhale, the biggest one you've done so far, really press the floor away, think of that angry cat spine. And then inhaling, dropping the belly, releasing the belly all the way down, lift the chest, look up towards the ceiling, press the floor away. Coming back to our tabletop, so we have a nice long line from the crown of the head, all the way down to the tailbone, to the bottom. We're going to lift the left arm up towards the ceiling. So don't worry if the arm doesn't come in line with the other one, it might be out to the side. That's absolutely fine. But try and relax the shoulders. Maybe the gaze or just the eyes go up towards that left hand. If you do find it uncomfortable with the hand in the air, you can place the hand on the lower back. But we'll just take two more breaths, so pressing the floor away. Trying to open the chest. One more breath. At the end of the exhale, the left hand goes through the hole between the arm and the leg. As we take the shoulder, the side of the face down into the mat, so threading the needle. Pressing the right hand into the floor. As you take the gaze up towards the ceiling, feeling the stretch between the shoulder blades. The left arm is on the mat. The right hand is pressing into the floor. And you can stay here like we did last week if you want to. Or if you prefer a little challenge, you can tuck under the right toes, lift the right knee so you're extending that leg. And then see if you can maybe float the right leg off of the floor. So find this little balance. Don't worry about going too high. Just firing up the core, firing up that right arm. Maybe see if you can take a few breaths here. 
If you need to return, that's okay. But if you have that leg in the air, bringing it slowly back down, the knee finding the mat, and threading the left hand, we'll go straight into the other side. The left hand finds the mat, the right arm reaches up, squeezing the shoulders. Maybe one side is a little bit more open than the other. Maybe spreading the fingers. And taking the gaze up towards the hand, towards the ceiling. Shoulder blades squeezing together, neck long. Two breaths, trying to reach up to maybe tickle or strike the ceiling. At the end of the next exhale, the right hand threads through the hole. So the same thing on the other side. Reaching that right arm as far away from you as you can before taking the shoulder, the side of the face into the floor. And then maybe pressing that left hand to look up towards the ceiling, feeling the stretch between the shoulder blades. So don't worry if it feels a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit tight, just ease off a little bit. When you have those options, you can stay here if you want to, or you can tuck under the toes of the left leg, lift the left knee, press into that heel, to maybe then see if you can lift the left leg off of the floor, finding that little balance, drawing the belly in, holding it there just for a few breaths, finding that spot, that comfortable spot that feels good for you, don't worry if you topple over, it happens, just come back. If the leg is in the air, slowly bring it back down to the mat. Um, threading the right arm, we'll sit back into child's pose just for a few moments. Releasing the elbows, the forehead down into the floor. Relaxing the shoulders. And coming back to that breath, if you've lost it. Feeling the inhale through the nose and the exhale through the nose. If that does feel uncomfortable or too different for you, then you can just exhale through the mouth, that's okay. Remember, I'm just here to guide you. It's up to you to do what you need to do. And you're gonna find a little stretch for the arches of the feet and the toes. So coming up through tabletop again, Tucking under the toes and then sending the bottom back to the heels. So this may be enough for you, the hands on the mat. You may want to go a little bit further, but remember we need to breathe. So walking the hands back to the knee. Option to stay here or to maybe take the hands onto the thighs. Wherever you are, we're just going to take three breaths. Inhaling through the nose. And then exhaling through the nose. Again, big inhale into the belly. Exhale, feel those shoulders drop. The last time, trying to relax the muscles in the face. Exhale. Good. Placing those hands back on the floor if you took them onto the thighs. Keeping those toes tucked, we're going to spread the fingers, engage the abdominal muscles, and then see if we can float the knees off the mat for about an inch or two. That nice long line still from the crown of the head all the way down to the bottom, to the tailbone. Two more breaths here, pressing the floor away. Lengthening through the spine, through the crown of the head. Really pulling the belly button in towards the back of the spine. I'd say that's about two breaths. So take the bottom back to the heels as you press back, downward facing dog. Here we go. One that hopefully everybody knows. Hands are shoulder width apart. Feet are hip distance. And a lot of the time in downward facing dog, people think that they need to get their hands as close to the feet as they can. But that's not always the case. See what it's like to have them nice and far away. You've got the whole length of your mat to play with. Maybe you want to bend the knees. The aim here is to get a nice long spine from the crown of the head all the way to the bottom. So that might mean really bending the knees so the chest comes onto the thighs. Or maybe you're nice and long, kick back to the legs and you can draw the heels down. But now that we've got those 
few main points. We're going to take a little wiggle, so pedaling through the feet, taking one heel down and the other, just opening up through the calves, the Achilles, the backs of the legs. And then when you feel nice and even, we're going to take three rises onto the balls of the feet. So inhaling, lifting the heels off of the mat. Then exhaling, drawing the heels down. So remember, you might have to bend the knees, that's okay. Inhale up, spread the shoulders. Exhale down. Last time, big inhale, pressing into the hands, the heels of the hands. Exhale down. Good, bring those knees onto the mat. Untuck the toes. You're going to step the right foot between the hands, coming into our nice low lunge position. So you might need to give the knee, the foot, a little helping hand to get forward. And when you're there, squeeze the bottom and then take the arms up towards the ceiling. Our nice low lunge, and Asana. We want to take a little ro rotation through the wrists and then the other way. And then when you've done, just reach the arms up towards the ceiling, relax the shoulders, and then drop the right arm down along by your side. We're going to take a little side stretch, so reaching the left arm up towards the ceiling and then over to the right, squeezing the bottom, maybe gazing up towards the ceiling. And you should feel this stretch down the, up the front of the left hip, all the way through the body, your shoulder, up to the fingertips. A few more moments here, we'll be squeezing the bottom, the glutes, lifting the chest, drawing the belly into the calf of the lower back. And a nice big inhale, reach the arm up, exhale, cartwheel both hands next to the right foot. So if you have blocks, this is where they might come in handy. They may need to go underneath your hands, but we're going to go for a half split. So sending the bottom back, flexing the foot, and then trying to take the chin past the knee. So don't worry about getting the forehead to the knee, or the chin to the knee or the shin. We're trying to find a nice long spine from the lower back, all the way up to the crown of the head. I will be doing a lot of talking here. I do apologize. I'm not sure what everyone's yoga experience is. So in our half splits, make sure the hips are nice and square. Shoulders are relaxed. And you may want to bend the knee so you're going to stretch into the belly of the hamstring, that back of the thigh. If you have the chin reaching towards the calf, now see what it's like to drop the head to the forehead. Just bowing down to the knee. Check in on those hips again. A few more moments here. Are you feeling a stretch into the lower back? When you're ready, bending the leg, sole of the foot finding the floor, tuck under the back toes of the back leg, lift the knee. If you need to stay down there in low lunge, you can. If not, reaching both arms up towards the ceiling, relaxing the shoulders and finding our high lunge. Good. So we're looking for that right angle in the right leg, the knee behind the toes, and the left heel pressing behind to the back of the room. The right hand comes down to the side of the body, if that feels okay. Lifting the left arm up, we'll take that little side stretch like we did in our low lunge. It's a little bit harder because we're adding in a little bit of a balance. Really important to keep all those factors from our low lunge, so squeezing the bottom still, drawing the belly in. And maybe if you fancy that challenge, taking the gaze up towards the ceiling. One more breath, stay strong through that front leg. And slowly we'll cartwheel the left, then the right hand to frame the foot. Step it back to plank if you need to drop the knees, you can do. But we'll take three breaths here. So the hands under the shoulders. So feet either hip distance or together. Squeeze the bottom. One more breath. 
and then tuck the chin to the chest, lift the hips high, roll back, downward facing dog. So you may need to make a few adjustments to make sure you're comfortable, have a little wiggle again. Same line with the head. Just really loosening off the body. And this time, instead of lifting the heels, we're going to bend the knees, everybody, as much as we can. So stillness through the legs for now, and then we inhale, bend the knees, maybe bring the chest onto the thighs, and then exhale, lengthen the legs. Good, again, inhaling, bending, pressing the index finger, the thumb into the floor, exhaling, lengthening. The last time, inhale, bend. Exhale, lengthen, press the floor away. Return the knees back down to the mat for our tabletop. So bring the knees down, untucking the toes, and then we'll bring the left knee towards the face as we plant the foot down between the hands. So again, you may need to lift your hands off the floor to do that. You may need to have the left hand behind the calf to give it a little extra push forward. When you're there, hips square, reach the arms up towards the ceiling. Relax the shoulders. If it is too much to have the hands up in the air, you've got any shoulder tightness and you can have them on the hips, that's okay. The best thing about yoga is you can really do whatever you want to do. Squeezing the bottom, lift the chest, maybe drop that left hand down this time, just a hand off the mat, reach the right arm up and then take a little side stretch, so reaching over to the left hand side. Our sequence this morning, this afternoon is all about opening through the side of the body, just taking that time to explore the space. One more breath, squeezing the bottom, maybe gazing up. And then as we exhale, the hands cartwheel down to frame the foot again. Maybe you need your blocks, so placing them either side of the foot or any props that you do have. And then we'll send the bottom back, diagonally away from the body, flexing the foot, lengthening through the spine, lifting the chin, and then seeing if you can send the chin down towards the calf. Again, we're not trying to touch just a gesture of direction. Relax the shoulders, relax the face. Come back to that breath. Feeling that stretch into the belly of the hamstring. So if you are feeling it behind the knee, then just give that knee a little bend, just to avoid overstretching those important ligaments and cruciates. So just ligaments and tendons. Relax the head if you've got the chin lifted. Hips stay nice and square. So we're really trying to breathe through this quite tight area, the backs of the hamstrings, backs of the legs. Maybe you feel it into the lower back. One more breath. Nice and slowly lifting the chest, the head, bending the left leg. Tucking under the toes, if you want to move on to high lunge, lifting the knee and then reaching the arms up towards the ceiling. So remember you can keep that knee down if you want to. Relax the shoulders. Find that right angle in the left leg. Lift the toes, spread the toes. And then maybe drop the left hand down, reach the right arm up and take that little bend over to the left. Again, it just takes a little bit more balance, a little bit more concentration. Don't worry if you're wobbling or if you topples, just come back. Two more breaths, so maybe engaging that quadricep of the back leg, that thigh. Lift the chest, inhale. Exhale, cartwheel the hands down to frame the foot. Step the left leg back to plank. Again, our three breaths here, just trying to strengthen up through the core, the wrists, the shoulders. Inhaling, exhaling. Again, inhale, exhale. Last one, big inhale. Exhale. Tuck the chin, send the bottom up towards the ceiling, ripple back to downward facing dog. Again, you may need to take a few adjustments, so maybe walking those feet in a little closer, a little further away. 
we'll have a little wiggle again because why not? It feels good. And then with that wiggle, see if you can walk the feet up towards the hands. So really bending the legs. If the hands have to come off, that's okay. But traveling all the way to the front of the mat, feet are hip distance. Knees are soft, nice and bent. And then take hold of opposite elbow in opposite hand. Gaze between the knees into our ragdoll. Taking a few moments here to feel the weight of the head, the weight of the body. And try and bring all that weight into the balls of the feet. So the heels are still touching the mat, but the pressure is going through the balls of the feet. If it's pulling you, maybe you want to have a little swing from side to side, moving from the hips. Again, releasing that lower back, that all important lower back. Feeling all that blood rush into the head. When we get the hips above the heart, it's called an inversion. And inversions are to be said to be better than a cup of coffee. I'm yet to believe that, but apparently sending all the blood to the brain just wakes it up. It gives you all this extra energy. Releasing the elbows. We're gonna plant the right hand into the floor, maybe onto a block. Bend the right knee as you lengthen the left leg and then draw the left arm as if you're pulling a bow and arrow up towards the ceiling, squeezing the shoulder blades together. So you've got this nice, Long line from the left fingertips all the way down to the left heel. And that right leg is nice and bent. So like we did in that tabletop position, we're just adding in a stretch into the hamstrings. Look up towards the hands, that nice side profile. Inhale. Exhale, cartwheel the hand down at the side, bending the left leg. The left hand finds a mat or a block or any other prop. Lengthen the right leg, reach the right arm up towards the ceiling, lots of left and right. Squeeze the shoulder blades. And find that stretch all the way down the right hamstring. So from behind the sitting bone, all the way down to the heel, the Achilles. Again, if you are feeling it behind the knee, maybe micro bend the knee. Taking the chin to the shoulder, gazing up towards the hand. Big inhale, exhale, cartwheel the hand down, bend both knees, tuck the chin and then to roll up nice and slowly, as slow as you can. Like I said last week, imagining you're moving through honey throughout the whole hour, so there's a little bit of resistance, a little bit of slowness, drawing the belly in, squeezing the bottom. As you stack the head on top of the spine, inhale, reach the arms up towards the ceiling. Exhale, hands find prayer, and then the hands find the heart. So coming into what is called Altadasana, our mountain pose, feet are underneath the hips. So keep the hands in prayer for now. Relax the shoulders. Reaching the arms up towards the ceiling. Take hold of the left wrist in the right hand so you've got the thumb and the index finger around the wrist. Inhale, reach up, and then exhale, bend over to the right. Like we did in our child's pose, feeling that stretch down the left side of the body, squeezing the bottom, maybe looking up towards the ceiling, only going as far as feels comfortable. One more breath, try and keep the chest lifted. Inhale, back to centre, other side. So taking the right wrist in the left hand this time, that thumb and index finger wrapping around like a bracelet. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, side bend. So squeezing the bottom. Relaxing the shoulders, so checking we're not wearing them as earrings. And the chest is still lifted, so we're not looking down towards the floor, either looking in front of you or up towards the ceiling. One more breath, inhale. Exhale, slowly return back to center. Bring those hands to prayer, reach them up towards the ceiling. Squeezing the bottom and just drop the head back. Releasing the neck. The arms are reaching up towards the ceiling as if you're diving up to the sky, but the head is just dropped back. 
If you want to release the mouth, open the mouth, you can. One more moment here, keeping those belly muscles, those core muscles engaged. Inhaling back to centre. Exhale, arms go out to the side, swan dive over the hamstrings. We'll inhale, halfway lift, so we lift the chest. The hands come to the thighs just above the knees and we're trying to find a nice long line from the crown of the head to the tailbone. Again, like we did in our tabletop. So keeping all those factors throughout class, you should feel the backs of the hamstrings. Working. One more breath, inhale. Exhale, place the hands down. Bend the knees, send those feet back to plank. One breath, inhaling. Exhaling. And then all together, we're gonna to go for a little mini vinyasa. So we inhale, lower the knees down to the mat. Exhale, bend the elbows as we try and take the chin in front of the fingers. And then the chest finds the floor as you swoop the chest up, feet lengthen behind into a baby cobra. So the fingertips are in line, or maybe just behind of the shoulders. The elbows are pulling into the rib cage, as if you've got sort of lotus wings. Squeezing the bottom. And you should be able to take the hands off without collapsing or face planting into the floor. One more moment here. Strengthening the muscles either side of the spine. Squeezing the bottom, pressing into the heels of the hands as you press back to that child's pose. Toes coming together, forehead falling into the floor. Relax the elbows. And just take a moment here to check in again. As we did at the beginning of class, notice those areas of tightness, of tension. Those areas of openness, maybe they've changed. One more breath. Taking this opportunity to rest, to recover. Slowly back to our tabletop, so that nice long line, crown of the head to the bottom. Bringing the right foot between the hands this time. We're going through a similar sort of sequence, so reaching the arms up towards the ceiling, relax the shoulders. This time you're going to take the left hand down to the floor, maybe onto a block if you need to. So the right arm is reaching up and the, the right leg is into the chest. So we're twisting into the right leg. Shoulder blades together. Looking up towards the hand. And then from here, if you feel comfortable, we're going to see if we can lift the back left leg up. So we're going to tuck under the toes, lift the left knee off the floor into that high lunge position. Maybe getting more of a stretch through the chest, but certainly through that left hip. We're going to move to a high lunge, so nice and slowly, the right arm goes behind, both arms lift up together, chest coming forward, right angle through the right leg. And then we'll make our way to a warrior two, so the left arm goes behind, the right arm reaches in front, the left heel finds the floor, that 45 degree angle. So we're in this really nice wide lunge, opening up to the left hand side. Again, a couple of checkpoints, so the right knee is bent. Knee is over the ankle. And that left leg is long, so we're really pressing into the back of the knee, using the thigh, the quadricep, and trying to connect the baby toe into the floor. We're gonna flip the right palm, reach the right arm up towards the ceiling, reverse warrior. Gazing towards the hand. And then if you feel like you want to lengthen this right leg, go ahead, press the floor away. Both legs along, right arm lifted, gazing up towards the hand, squeezing the bottom, engaging the quadriceps. One more breath, inhale. Exhale, back to warrior two, bending the knee. Then I'm going to take the right forearm onto the right thigh, so that little ledge. As the left arm reaches up towards the ceiling, gaze up into our side angle. So we're pressing the right forearm into the right knee. Kind of find the length between the shoulder and the ear, and then gazing up to the hand. Option to stay here or to maybe reach that left arm up and over. 
bringing the armpit towards the nose, slowly gazing up. So find that opening through the left side. One more breath. I know it's getting shaky. And then exhale, release back to warrior two. Reach in the arms, inhale. Exhale, cartwheel the hands to frame the foot. Send it back to plank. And we'll go again for that baby vinyasa. So inhale, lower the knees. Exhale, bend the elbows, take the chin, then the chest to the floor. Lifting a little higher into our cobra this time. So the hands stay in the same place. We press the floor, squeeze the bottom. Elbows bent, lifting the chest. If you want to stay down there, you can do. Just be mindful of the back. One more moment, lifting the chest wherever you are. And exhale back to child's pose. Taking an inhale through the nose. Exhale, sign it out of the mouth. And a couple of breaths here. Yeah. I know that could have got, felt a little bit strong, maybe a little fiery in the leg. So just giving it some time to recover before we move on to the next side. So when you are ready, just joining in your tabletop, shoulders over the wrists. Step the left foot this time between the hands. Nice and slowly reach the arms up, relax the shoulders, squeezing the bottom, lifting the chest. The right hand comes down to the floor, maybe a block or a book, stacking the shoulders, gazing up towards the left hand, opening through the chest, through the neck, and then taking it into that high lunge, so tucking under the toes, lifting the knee, pressing into the heel, Finding that nice long line from the heel all the way up to the crown of the head. And we'll slowly swim the arms up to high lunge, so reaching the chest, the arms up towards the ceiling, squeezing the bottom. And then nice and slowly opening to warrior two to the right heel, finds the floor. Right arm reaches back, left arm stretches forward. We should have a nice straight line from the middle finger all the way down to the back middle finger. We've got that right angle again in the left leg. That long right leg pressing into the back of the knee, contracting the quadricep. And pressing that baby toe into the floor. And whilst we're here, just check that that left knee is not collapsing in. It's pressing it out to the side. Lift the palm, reach the arm, reverse warrior, gazing up towards the fingers, towards the ceiling. Staying nice and low for now. And then slowly lengthening that left leg, both legs long, squeezing the bottom, gazing up towards the hand. Relaxing the head. Take an inhale here, try and touch the ceiling. Exhale into warrior two. Take the forearm, the left forearm onto the left thigh as we reach the right arm up and over. Squeezing the bottom, gazing up towards the hand. Remember, press that forearm away from the body. So you have that length from the shoulder all the way up to the earlobe. If you want to, you can reach that right arm. So it reaches away from the body, the bicep coming into the side of the face. The bottom squeezing. We'll take one more breath here, looking up towards the ceiling. And then nice and slowly returning back to warrior two. So the right arm goes behind, the left arm lifts. Relax the shoulders. Reaching the arms in opposite direction. And then slowly cartwheeling the left, then the right down to the mat. Step the left foot back to plank. We'll drop the knees again. Exhale, lower the body. Inhale into your cobra, so pressing the floor away, squeezing the bottom. And then returning back to child's pose. The bottom into the heels, the forehead into the floor. Relaxing the shoulders. Relaxing the elbows. 
and revisiting that breath. So that inhale for five and that exhale for five. Breathing into the belly, the rib cage, the back, the chest, the whole body. Two more breaths here. Reconnecting with the breath. Maybe you lost it through that little sequence, that's okay. And then finding a way, whatever way feels comfortable for you, and meeting back in downward facing dog. So stacking the shoulders, tucking the toes, lifting back, making those adjustments. And we'll just take three releasing breaths here. So what we do with the releasing breath is we inhale through the nose and then we sigh out of the mouth. And you're ready in your own time, big inhale. Exhale, sigh it out. Again, inhale. Exhaling. Last time, inhaling. Exhaling, just releasing, sighing it out, letting everything go. We're going to bend the knees again, begin to walk the feet up to the hands. So this time, we're going to take those feet nice and wide. So heel toeing the feet out wider than the hips. Toes go out, bend the knees, and then come down into a malasana or a yogic squat. So the knees are going out to the side, the weight's going through the heels. Don't worry if you're up here and the heels are off of the floor. Just find somewhere you can lift the chest. If you need to pop blocks or towels under the, heat, the heels, you can do. A little magic trick is if you walk those feet out nice and wide, eventually they'll find the floor. Don't worry if they don't. Wherever you are, hands to prayer, lift the chest, close the eyes. Just take a few moments to feel that weight going through the tailbone all the way down into the mat. And that energy moving all the way up through the spine, up through the crown of the head. The elbows pressing the knees behind you to the back of the room. And that stretch into the hips, into the Achilles, the calves, the lower back. And with the eyes remaining closed, release the elbows, the hands, take the hands behind you as you find the bottom finds the floor. Then you lengthen the legs out in front of us. Opening the legs to just wider than hip distance, maybe as wide as your mat. Walking the hands forward, flexing the feet and then just folding down. So releasing the head, releasing the body, and simply folding over the legs. So we did this similarly in our forward fold standing. So we're just releasing any pressure, any muscle engagement, and just letting go. If you wish, you can take those three releasing breaths again. So inhaling through the nose. And exhaling out of the mouth, or whatever way you find comfortable, releasing, relaxing. Release the muscles in the face. Maybe the knees need to be bent, that's okay. Maybe you need to sit on a pillow or some blocks. Just finding the position that feels comfortable and welcoming for you. And then it's okay to use props. They help us get a little deeper into postures or make postures more accessible for our bodies. Take one more breath here. And folding down, feeling the weight of the body, the weight of the torso. And with the eyes closed, slowly very slowly, see if you can roll it up the spine, bone by bone, stacking the vertebrae, the spine, bringing the legs together, pointing the toes, reaching the arms out in front of you, align with the shoulders, take a nice big inhale. And as you exhale, draw the belly.
belly in and begin to roll up the spine. So we're going to place the lower back, the middle back, taking your time, the upper back, the shoulders, the head, the arms, find the floor, bend the knees, the soles of the feet, finding the mat. And those feet should be about hip distance. You shouldn't be able to touch the heels, but they should be about a hand away from the bottom. Knees going up towards the ceiling, squeeze the glutes, lift the tailbone, the lower back, feeling rolling through to the upper back, onto the shoulders, into bridge pose. Either the backs of the hands find the floor so the palms are open towards the ceiling, or you interlace the fingers underneath the body, draw the wrists down towards the heels as you press the arms into the mat, lifting those hips a little higher. Being careful not to flare the ribs too much, so engaging those abdominals to look after the back. Bringing the openness through the hips through the belly, one more breath, if you have the fingers interlaced and slowly letting them go, back to the hands, find the floor, we're going to tuck under the pelvis and then try and roll down the spine bone by bone, so placing each vertebrae, each bone down individually, if you're lucky you might get a click, if not don't worry, Lower back finds the floor, bring the knees into the chest. If you have the space, take the arms out into aeroplane wings, back to the hands, finding the floor. If not, then you can bend the elbows into what's called cactus. And then we'll allow both knees to fall to the left. As you turn the head to the right, eyes remaining closed. You may need to make a few adjustments here, so that might mean a pillow between the knees or underneath the knees. What we're trying to do is draw the right shoulder down into the floor, the top of the right ear into the mat. And then we're allowing those knees to be heavy, so that might mean they find the floor. It may mean that they're suspended in air, but wherever they are, trying to let go in the hips. Like I said, you might need a helping hand, some blocks or cushions or a rolled up blanket. Wherever you are, you should feel this twist through the spine nice and comfortably, so nothing too painful, nothing too challenging. It should be a releasing posture. Just one more breath. And when you're ready, engage in those abdominals. Drawing the belly in, the knees in, so you can roll all the way onto the back. And then allow both knees to fall to the right as you turn the head to the left. So it does everything the other way around. The left shoulder, the top of the left ear, finding the floor. The knees relaxing either into the mat, into the floor, or onto a block or a pillow. Maybe you need to place that right hand on top of the left knee just to give it a helping hand to relax, to let go. We hold so much tension in our hips. But a lot of the time when we tell them to let go, when we try and relax, we find that we grip even more. So sending the breath down to that area. To that left hip joint. Also feel this twist through the spine from the lower back all the way to the top of the crown of the head. Last breath in, last breath out. Draw the knees into the chest. Give them a nice little hug, maybe a little rock, a little roll from side to side. And we'll take that happy baby like we did last week. So the knees open out to the side. The arms go in between the legs. So take hold of either the ankles or the outside edges of both feet. Shining the soles of the feet up towards the ceiling. This right angle in the knees. And we're drawing the knees down. 
alongside the body. Maybe you want to take a little rock, a little roll. Get some nice pelvic tilt to get into that lower back. It's a really great stretch to do if you've been sat at a desk all day. Maybe if you've been standing all day, it's really important to stretch, to massage that lower back. So you're saving yourself a little bit of money here by giving yourself a little bit of self-massage. Seeing if you can feel it higher up through the spine. Maybe let the head go with it so you give yourself a little cranium massage. You can stay here as long as you want to. Or you can make your way into your Shavasana by letting go of the feet. Lengthening the legs out as wide as the mat. The toes fall out, the heels are in. And then today we're going to place the left hand on the chest, the right hand on the belly. So now if the legs are long, it's uncomfortable for your back, you can have the feet into the floor, the knees bent, but just allow the knees to fall in. And if the legs are long, the knees are out. And we're just going to spend the next five minutes with our breath. So again, you're exactly where you need to be right now. There's no rush. So we're just going to bring our awareness to the left hand. The breath in the collarbone. The inhale inflating the chest. And the exhale deflating the chest. Seeing if the breath gets stuck anywhere, or if there's a little bit more openness in the chest now after we've spent the last 55 minutes opening, stretching, releasing. But if you can, see if you can breathe into that left hand without the right hand moving too much. Inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the nose. And slowly moving the hands, both hands, to the rib cage. So just underneath the chest, maybe the thumbs go behind. Fingertips spreading. We're going to see if we can breathe into the side of the body, so into the rib cage. As you inhale, try and press into those hands. As you exhale, just release, relax away from the hands. Feel the ribs knitting back together. Take an inhale, expand into the side of the body. And exhale, release. Don't worry if it takes you a couple of breaths to get this one. Like everything, it's a skill. It takes time, it takes practice. So just starting our practice now. Inhaling into the side of the rib cage. And exhaling, feeling the rib cage move back together. Ready, move the hands down to the belly, just in line with the belly button, relaxing the shoulders. And now trying to breathe into the belly, inflating like a balloon, and then slowly deflating, falling, letting go. Again, inhaling, seeing the belly rise. And exhaling, feeling the belly fall. Just taking a few breaths this way. Seeing 
the lungs all the way to the top, and then emptying all the way down to the bottom. Don't worry if you go a little bit lightheaded during this exercise. This means you're drawing in a little bit more oxygen than usual. Sending more oxygen, more blood to the muscles, to the brain. Taking the hands back to where they were at the beginning, so the right hand on the belly, the left hand on the chest. And then now we're going to try and breathe into the right hand, into the rib cage, then into the chest. And then exhale, the chest falls, the rib cage closes, and the belly falls. Again, inhale, belly rises. Ribs stretch open, chest rises, and exhale, chest falls. Ribs relax, belly falls. Inhale, belly. Side of the body, chest. Exhale, chest, sides, belly falls. Just taking a few breaths in your own time with this wave motion. Rippling in, and rippling out. Don't worry if you lose it or get distracted, just make sure you're breathing in a way that feels comfortable for you. And don't worry if it's gone quiet. Your connection is okay. I'm just giving you a bit of time, a bit of space. Explore the silence. If you have the hands on the body, just release them down alongside the body, the palms open towards the ceiling. Take a nice big natural inhale through the nose. Sigh out to the mouth. And then closing the lips. Begin to bring a little movement back to the body, so wiggling the toes, wiggling the fingers. A gentle no of the head, so move from side to side. With the eyes remaining closed, when you are ready, take a little shuffle to the left. So you can roll onto the right side, staying on that warmth of your mat. Pausing here, feeling the comfort, the security of this posture. Just allowing the blood pressure, the heart rate to return to normal so we avoid feeling dizzy when we sit up. Eyes closed. Gently pressing into a comfortable seated position. So that may mean legs crossed or sitting on a pillow or legs long. Just taking the backs of the hands into the knees. The palms are open towards the ceiling. Relax the shoulders. Just live tall through the crown of the head. Engage the abdominals. Ground down through the sit bones. Let's take this moment to really enjoy the calm you feel in the body, in the breath, in the mind. And try and take this calm with you throughout your day, hopefully throughout your week. And if you do lose this slow pace, the sense of calmness, then feel free to return back to this video at any time. Bring the hands together in front of the heart, giving it a little rub to create some warmth between the palms. And then when you've got a little bit of warmth, a little bit of heat, place the hands in front of the eyes. Allow the eyes to slowly open and adjust to the light within the room. Bringing the hands to prayer. Namaste, everybody. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and this has really helped. You find a tiny bit of calm, a little bit of relaxation, and hopefully I'll see you next week. Thank you.